Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the differences between RAW and JPEG in your camera. Now in my own personal photography, I always shoot in JPEG and I'm very happy with the JPEG output from my cameras. You know, I, I enjoy adjusting sharpness and contrast and all of the different art filters and the images I get from my camera through the JPEGs are just fine. But that being said, I always make sure that I'm shooting RAW plus JPEG so that I always capture that RAW image so that I can go back in the post process processing and make changes if I want because once you take a JPEG image that JPEG image has been baked in and it's very difficult to make anything but the most minor adjustments to it in terms of color and highlights and shadows and things like that whereas raw images give you a lot more latitude so in this video I'm going to talk about why the raw images give you so much more flexibility and then I'm going to go through a real world example All right, so let's take a picture with our virtual camera here. And as you can see, this is just a landscape I took out in Shenandoah last year. But our camera is going to process this and create a raw file. And the raw file can be named with the extension of like .orf for Olympus or .nef for like Nikon, etc., to DNG, which is an Adobe digital negative format. But all these are different kinds of raw files, you know, depending on the kind of camera you have or brand that you have and they're all proprietary. You can also create a JPEG image uh, and or. So sometimes you might shoot RAW only, sometimes you might shoot JPEG only, but JPEG files end with the extension of .jpg or .jpeg. And this is how you can tell the difference visually between a RAW image and a JPEG image. So now we can talk a little bit about the different kinds of RAW files. Now, you may have heard that our cameras can uh, create 12-bit RAW files. And sometimes they're even distinguished beyond that to being 12-bit uncompressed or 12-bit lossless compression or 12-bit lossy compression. Uh, and some cameras are also capable of recording 14-bit RAW files in the same order, uncompressed, lossless, or lossly. Some can do all of those, some, some can do just some of those, some can only do one of these. But what's the difference between all of these different types of files? Well, basically a 12-bit uncompressed file is using all 12 bits to represent a single number. So in the example I have here, I'm representing the number one. So to do that, I just have 11 leading zeros and the number one using all 12 bits to represent the number one. 12-bit lossless compression tries to eliminate bits and use them for something else, but still accurately represent the number one. Uh, so what it's gonna do in this case is strip away all those zeros and just use one bit to represent one. And then use all of the remaining zeros that it just freed up for other types of information, whether it's color or luminance, et cetera, you know, highlights and shadows. It can now use those bits for other types of information. Um, but, it doesn't lose any information. It still knows that this pixel is still has a value of one. 12 bit lossy compression, what it does is it throws away some information to free up the bits to use for other things. So in this case, in a 12 bit lossy compression scenario, it might decide that one is so close to zero, let's just call it zero and free up all 12 bits to use for something else. And if you look in some forum discussions, sometimes you've heard that Sony uses a lossy compression scheme and people will take pictures and do these comparisons and they'll pixel peep a lossy compression raw image and I'll say, yeah, you see right here, I lost a little bit of the highlights or you see right here, I lost a little bit of detail. I mean, the differences between these three different types of raw files is, is you know, virtually indistinguishable. But there are some people that can see the difference if they really pixel peep. So if you can, if you have a choice, always try to use 12-bit uncompressed or 12-bit lossless compression and try to avoid using lossy compression if you can so that you know you always have the maximum image quality. And the reason they do these different types of uh, raw files or compression schemes is you know, to make the file sizes smaller. 
So the 12-bit lossless compression scheme is the best of the three because you get the benefits of having not losing any image quality but getting f smaller file sizes. And 14-bit is exactly the same. But instead of using 12 bits to represent the number one, we have 14 bits to represent the number one. And then a lossless compression just strips away 13 of those zeros and frees them up to use for other things, other pixels, other colors, etc. And then the lossy compression does the same thing. It, it rounds it down and says, you know, let's just call it zero and free up all 14 bits to use for some other pixel or color. JPEGs, on the other hand, use 8-bit lossy compression. Now there are other JPEG standards out there that are lossy or lossless, but in our cameras we use an 8-bit lossy compression. But what's neat about the JPEG format is we can control how much compression we want to do. At a minimum, it's going to compress things down 2.7 to 1 uh, and make things, you know, uh, 2.7 times smaller. However, uh, these compression levels are usually preset in the cameras and just called super fine, fine, normal, basic, where basic has the most compression and fine or super fine has the least amount of compression. Uh, but that being said, you know, in a blind test, I think in most cameras, it'd be very difficult to tell the difference between these three or four different uh, presets in compression. And again, if you pixel peep, you will see differences between, say, basic and super fine. But looking at the image in whole, it'd be very difficult to tell uh, which compression scheme you used in the JPEG in, in our cameras. Now, what's the difference, say, difference between, say, 12-bit, 14-bit, 8-bit? Can you really see a difference? Because I've been saying all this time, it's very difficult to tell the difference between all of these unless you really pixel peep. Uh, but is there a big difference between 12-bit or 14-bit and 8-bit? Well, let's let's go to the next slide and I'll, I'll uh, try and explain that. Now, I always recommend you use the maximum quality available to in your camera. So in, in the case of Olympus, um, the, the maximum quality that we can use is 12-bit lossless and super fine. So we have no choice on the raw. The raws are fixed to be used to 12-bit lossless compression. But on the JPEGs, I recommend you set it to super fine, which gives you the uh, least amount of compression to your JPEGs. But if you have 14-bit uncompressed or 14-bit lossless compression available to you on your camera, choose that. It'll give you better quality, particularly in the shadow areas. Well, let's compare a 12-bit raw image to an 8-bit JPEG image. Now, 12-bit raw images means we're using a bit depth of 12 for each color channel because our cameras have three color channels, red, green, and blue, or you may have heard it called RGB. So we have an RGB color space in 12 bits per channel, red, green, and blue. And each channel we can represent in a 12-bit raw file between 0 and 2000, or 4,095 different shades of red from black all the way to a deep red. And the same thing for green and blue. And to get different colors, all they do is they assign different values to each of these channels to represent another color. So if we want a magenta, we might change some of the reds and greens and blue values so that we can see a magenta or we might see a cyan. Uh, but how many different colors can we represent using a 12-bit system? Well, to figure that out, we just multiply those three together. Uh, 4096 because we have to include the zero times 4096 times 4096 and we get 68 billion potential colors that we can represent in a 12-bit raw image that's a lot <laughs> now in a jpeg image we only have a range between 0 and 255 so including the zero, we multiply 256 times 256 times 256, and we get 16,777,216 colors. That's a lot of colors, too, that we can represent in, in even a JPEG image. And that's why a lot of times when you look at JPEGs and RAW side by side, they look exactly the same. But we need to put these numbers in the context, right? I mean, what is 16 million colors? What is 68 billion, billion colors? What does that mean, right? Those are such huge numbers. Well, if we look at our monitors, our laptops, our tablets, our phones, 90% of those, if not more, 
use 8-bit RGB color systems, meaning they can represent up to 16 million colors. There are now some 10-bit monitors coming out, or there have been for a while now, but they're not, you know, they're very expensive, a lot of them. Uh, but there are some 10-bit uh, monitors that can represent even more colors. But for the most part, 90% of us are looking at 8-bit images on our computers and laptops and screens and phones. Another way to look at it is our eyes can see between 6 and 10 million colors. I mean, some people a little more, some a little less, like me. But, uh, you know, the human eye can distinguish, you know, a lot of colors as well. And if you look at the scale again, you can see the JPEG more than covers what our human eyes can see and it covers everything that most of the monitors out there can actually display. And I should add printers in that as well. A lot of printers, uh, you know, can only print up to 16 million colors. <clears throat> and some higher end printers can do more than that. But generally speaking, most of the printers can only print up to 16 million colors, if that. Uh, so why on earth do we need a raw file when a JPEG image covers everything we, we would can possibly see on a screen or on a print? Well, let's, uh, let's go into the next slide and I'll explain that. Now, if we look at this image, you can see that uh, the sky is way overexposed. In fact, you know, there's a lot of uh, things clipped completely to white. And this is a raw image, but it's being displayed on an 8-bit monitor that you're probably looking at right now. And certainly what I'm looking at, I'm looking at an 8-bit RGB monitor display, and I'm, I'm seeing mostly white in the sky. And I am seeing very rich greens with a little bit of haze, but the, uh, the highlight areas are definitely clipped to white. Uh, and so what we need to do is we need to be able to bring uh, those highlights down, and we can do that using a raw image. We can do that to some extent even in a JPEG image, but to a lesser degree. So let's take a little piece of the sky out right here as a sample, and let's talk about processing raw versus JPEG. So here's a little slice that represents that piece of the sky. And when we took the picture, the camera created a raw image. And that raw image, because it's digital, samples that sky at different levels and recreates the colors that it sees using you know, some combination of red, green, and blue. But in this case, let's just talk about blue. Uh, and if you look closely, you can see that it gradually goes from this very deep, rich blue all the way up to a complete white here. So what it did is it's looking here, and there, there may be a little bit of blue in here, but it's com clipped it completely to white in the raw image. And then there's a little bit of blue in here, but it was able to capture that. And all the way down the line to this uh, pure blue down here. Now when the camera created the JPEG image, it looks at that blue sky, and it probably said, uh, and because JPEGs don't have the same bit depth as a raw image, it was not able to capture all these different levels like the raw file was. It had to average them and say, okay, I'm going to represent that part of the sky as just a light blue because it just doesn't have the resolution or bit depth to record all the different shades in the sky. And some cameras, uh, and this is completely arbitrary by the manufacturer how that blue sky is rendered because some some manufacturers might say you know the sky is pretty bright uh, let's just make that all white it's not really blue it's closer to white than it is blue so let's make that white because jpegs don't have as many colors to choose from to represent the sky and that seems to be what happened in the image that i just displayed other cameras will say you know, that's a, that's a nice blue, but let's make it a nice rich blue. So it's going to uh, turn that part of the sky to this dark or deep rich blue. And that's why you hear sometimes, you know, I really like the JPEG outputs of my Olympus cameras, or I really like those Canon colors that come out in the JPEGs. Uh, it's because every manufacturer has their own way of processing how it sees that part of the image and translates that into a color. Uh, in the JPEGs. Now raw images will always try to faithfully reproduce what it sees in 
in the uh, in real life <clears throat> and then compress that down digitally to the bit depth that it's capable of either 12 bit or 14 bit uh, but generally speaking it tries to faithfully reproduce the colors in raw for processing later the way that you want and not necessarily the way that the camera manufacturer may do it and that's why a lot of professionals shoot in raw is because they want to be able to process the colors to accurately accurately represent what they saw with their eyes or you know particularly with product photography you want very accurate colors uh, and that's not something you're able to do with jpeg but that's something you can only do with raw and this is basically why it's because of the resolution or the bit depth that raw files have over jpegs so let's talk briefly about processing a raw image so here are the raw pixels that we captured that have all been digitized and converted to a color and I'm going to say I want to bring the highlights down or reduce the luminance of the blues near the top of this image. So even though this may look completely white on the monitor or to my eye, there's, there may still be a little bit of color in there. It might be like a 001 or something, right? Just a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to use my Lightroom raw processing software and slide my highlight slider down. And now that part of the sky looks more like this so there's no more clipping you can see i was able to bring down the luminance just enough so that i can see it now on my monitor or what a monitor is capable of seeing or what my eye is capable of seeing and then i might decide that i want to bring the shadows up or the, the deep blue sky up a little bit because it's not that dark you know it is bright day i don't want the skies to look like it's twilight or about to go dark so I'm going to bring the shadows up a level to say about here so that the sky is a little bit more even like this so that nothing's too dark and nothing has been clipped too white. So I have a nice even gradation from uh, a light blue to a lighter blue. And at this point I can export this image usually as a JPEG so I can put it on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. And it is going to export to a JPEG and JPEGs don't have the same bit depth, but when it exports, I no longer have a complete white here. It's going to average these together and create this very light blue instead of clipping to white. If I brought the uh, highlights down enough, it still may clip to white, in which case I may have to bring the highlights down even more. But if I can see it on my monitor, which is an 8-bit monitor, I know I'll see it in the final JPEG image. And then these colors in here get averaged out to this color and then the colors down here get averaged out to this blue so you can see that in the final jpeg image that i export i don't have these deep rich blues like you see over here and i don't have any clipped highlights i have sort of a more balanced image for exporting and displaying on instagram twitter facebook etc now if i were to take the jpeg file instead and try and process it the JPEG image, like I said, doesn't have the same bit depth. So what's going to happen is all of this part of the sky up here that's very, very light might get clipped completely to white. And down here, these deeper blues might be, get rendered as a dark blue instead of all of these gradations. And then here in the middle, we'll just average out to this blue. So I'll try and process this. And I'm going to slide the highlight slider down like so. But because all of this is white, there's nothing There's not, nothing to reduce. There's no blue colors to reduce the luminance to bring it down. So the image is still going to be clipped here in white. And the same thing goes for the shadows. Uh, I can bring up the shadows. Uh, but because there is blue there, there's something to grab onto uh, for the shadow slider. I can probably lighten the shadows up just a little bit. To a, to a level that I'm comfortable with. And then when I export this, because I'm exporting a JPEG to a JPEG, I'm not losing any information or changing anything. And I'm gonna get an exact copy when I export this as a JPEG, meaning the highlights will still be clipped, but the shadows will be brought up just a little bit along with the midtones here. All right, so let's take this image into Lightroom and actually process it just like we were talking about, bringing down the, the uh, highlights and pushing up the shadows a little bit, and then maybe a couple other things. Okay, so here's my RAW plus JPEG that I took in the camera. So let's go ahead and process the RAW image first. And 
what I'll do is uh, let's just bring the highlights down to see if we can recover some of that blue sky. And it looks like it did a pretty good job there. Uh, maybe we'll just touch the shadows a little bit. We don't need too much there. And there's a lot of haze in this image. Man, I should have used a polarizer or something. But let's go ahead and try and dehaze some of this. Wow, and that's really bringing in the sky, isn't it? That looks good. And we'll add a little clarity. And it's a little bit cool so i'm going to warm it up some maybe something like that maybe a little bit of magenta and this is all very subjective right uh and obviously i was using a fish eye so i'm going to reframe this a little bit uh let me get rid of the fish eye uh effect and I'm going to go ahead and crop this. I like nice wide crops. If you guys watch my live streams where I do editing, uh, this this will look very familiar. Uh, something like that. See, I do crop my own images, right? <laughs> For those of you that watch my live streams, they always accuse me of cropping too much, but okay. Um, yeah, that looks good. Let me Let me do maybe a little bit more uh some clarity and some dehaze and then i'm going to soften soften it just a little bit by reducing the texture and i'm just going to punch in so it renders it properly and yeah that looks pretty good so i think that's you know pretty representative of what i was trying to do in the slideshow but let's go ahead and apply these settings to the jpeg image and it's easy to do in lightroom all I do is highlight the JPEG and I say synchronize the settings here and I make sure everything is checked so that the exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, everything, all the settings I just did to the raw file will now get applied to the JPEG. And as you can see, even in the thumbnail, it looks like a wreck. Um, let's go ahead and compare these two. So we have the JPEG here on the left and the raw image on the right. And you can see what happened here. All of the clipping and color choices that uh, were lost or colors that were lost in the blue. And you get a lot of this banding because the, 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 raw, the JPEG image just didn't have the bit depth to recover or reduce the luminance of colors that we couldn't see on our monitors. So we brought it down but the JPEG image just, just didn't have any information, so it stayed clipped to white or some variation thereof. However, in the shadows, as we, I showed in the slideshow, we, we, were, we were able to bring up the shadows a little bit uh, because there is information there. But still, some of the colors were lost, particularly as we start to get a little bit into the brighter areas. But look at that. You can barely tell these are clouds here in the JPEG, but then over here on the raw image, uh, no problem at all. And then at this point, there's no point to export this JPEG file, but if I export the raw image um, here, I will get a nice JPEG because now I have compressed all of the colors down into an area that is viewable within the 8 bits like on most of our monitors and what our human eye can see. So I'm just going to do that. We're going to do export. All right, and here's the exported JPEG. And as you can see, it exported very nicely. Let's compare that directly to the raw image that we have. And yeah, it looks exactly the same. If I really pixel peep, I might be able to find some differences because again, we did, we are reducing the bit depth of the raw image that we're seeing on our screen. But as I was saying before, most of our monitors and everything we use to look at images are all 8-bit anyway. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel or hitting the like button or maybe buying me a coffee. And if you'd like, you can join me every Thursday and Sunday in my live streams where I can edit your photos or answer your questions about photography and Olympus cameras. But either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon.